Good evening, everyone. My name is Jared, and I'm here to present my senior capstone project. Um, the company I currently work for is called Autonomous Tractor Corporation. Um, their main business is um, research and development in the manufacturing area, specifically diesel electric modification kits for tractors. Um, as I said, my name is Jared. Um, my first two years was down here at Dunwoody in industrial engineering, drafting, and design. Um, during that, I learned how to machine, which led me to ATC. My um, current role there is as a machinist and a fabricator. The problem statement for my project is the current time for project conception to working prototype is six months, resulting in over budget projects. And my project complete date was 04 29 16. Um, the members of my team were Terry Anderson, that is the president of ATC, Isaac Braun, the lead engineer, and myself with um, other laborers um, for support. The company's vision statement is to design autonomous vehicles to meet the growing needs of um, the world. The mission statement is identify unmet needs in the agriculture market and rapidly prototype solutions. This led to my project focus, which is decreased lead time of prototyping to support mission statement with the ultimate goal of realizing ATC's vision. The um, main, main um, parts that I used to attack my project were a time study, a 5S of the machine shop, a failure modes effects and analysis, work instructions, and financial calculations. I will start with program outcome two, and which is a time study. What I did was for um, one of the parts that we commonly produce, it's in many different revisions. Um, it more or less goes through this process, and I just kind of followed it. Um, it's a little bit different way of doing a time study, um, but I wanted to make it very visual on what department the part was in at the time and then why, why the part was going there, and also identify um, some of the wastes. So the result was uh, the identification of waste in the, pro in the process. One of the challenges the overarching, and it, this specifically, is because we're a research and development company, we don't um, ever do production. We often don't produce two pieces that look identical. So data collection is difficult when you always you're, you're, have an ever-changing product. My next deliverable was um, 5S, and this was kind of representative of what um, the, the work areas look like in general, and I picked this picture to show, I mean, they had, they had the board up, they had the pegs up, why, why didn't it work, why didn't it stay organized, and a lot of it was um, basically not identifying where things go. As you can see in this picture, this is after I did my um, 5S. On the floor, everything's marked. Um, we use black for things that aren't movable, that will always be there. Yellow things that are movable, but need to be returned all around the stock um, supply. You notice I put yellow to prevent things from just creeping out and um, getting out of order. I identified the tools that were necessary in each one of the machines made within arm reach. And I also organized the tools and put them into locations. Um, my budget wasn't very large and I found just by implementing simple solutions, grabbing a block of wood and organizing annular bits so they're all in one area. This doesn't have to be a million dollar project. You can implement really, really simple solutions that make a large impact. Um, Everything that is left out in the open is marked, so it gets put back. And everything that's left out in the open is used weekly. Anything that's not used weekly is put away on the site, also marked in the drawer. And that um, is going to help with the sustainability of this 5S project. I looked at what the, the inputs and the outputs were on a lot of the machining. The input was stock supply of parts, so I labeled that. And the outputs are um, work pieces and chips or trash. So I made sure that I had a place that was marked where those go. And we came up with some overall guidelines on how we're going to operate. 
we have a lot of different types of parts, so um, coming up with long-term storage specific to parts wasn't reasonable. So we just came up with the idea, hey, we're going to leave the parts that are in process out on the table. But just, just the parts that are currently being worked on out on the table, everything else is kept in a separate staging area. The result was a decreased lead time of machining. The greatest challenge is, like I said, I had a small budget. I wanted to make sure what I was doing was sustainable. And data collection on how much time was saved is very, very difficult since we weren't making the same thing every time. So what I did, I realized it's a little elementary, but I did a spaghetti noodle diagram of what it took um, before the 5S on to acquire all the tools to actually produce this. And then after the 5S, which is shown in green, is showing um, basically I have all my tools right next to the machine and that table right in front of the machine is the main work area. So the workers stayed in place. Um, my next deliverable was a failure mode effects and analysis. And this was pointed at assembly of the wheel motor, specifically because they were having a lot of problems previously. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, the outcome of the FMEA is something called an RPM, um, risk, risk priority number. And basically, it, you're, you're in a way guessing or gauging what the severity of something going wrong, how often you think it's going to happen, and whether or not you're going to be able to detect it if it does happen. You multiply all the numbers, and what it gives you is it just highlights this is a very, very important thing that you need to pay special attention to, or come up with some sort of a recommended, a, a re recommended action such as something won't fit properly, I'm going to produce a go-no real gauge to make sure that a problem doesn't occur from that. So that was the results I identified the most severe risks in the design process. One of the challenges is FMAs are generally done in groups. It um, prevents confirmation bias and just missing things in general. But I am, like I said, a small company. I'm the sole process owner. I'm the only one who knows how to do this. So sitting down and going through an FMEA, I, I tried to include the other engineer, but he wasn't very familiar with the process. So it was, it was tough to include him and make sure that I really captured all the possible problems. My next um, deliverable is standard work. And one of the things I want to do is easy visualization of um, what, what I'm trying to accomplish. If it's not a standard tool or if it's not a standard part, such as a piece of hardware, I want to show a picture. I want to be able to grab the document, look at the document, compare it to what, what I'm trying to assemble. So I have all the main parts listed. I utilize some CAD modeling um, and wording um, to reinforce the different um, assembly steps and actual physical pictures um, circled highlighted. Um, what I was talking about to walk them through this assembly process so I won't have to be the sole owner anymore. So the result was I defined a method to efficiently um, complete assembly. Um, one of the challenges that it wasn't a standard process anymore so I can't tell you I saved 50%. I can't say I saved you know 90% um, time reduction. Not having anything to gauge off of is difficult to show or prove improvement. Um, and then finally, my last deliverable is financial calculations. From the previous um, uh, flowchart that I would shown you, this is a revised flowchart. We're utilizing a subcontractor um, to take out some of the both the time and uh, the total capital needed uh, after. Um, identifying a key supplier, somebody real close to us, somebody who's willing to work with us, give me the processing times and setup times. Um, I was able to send a part out and two of the same, which doesn't happen very often. And the result was a uh, lead time reduction of 82% with a 23% cost reduction, which is really great. It makes everyone's lives easier. Come, you come out with a better product and a lot quicker. So that was one of the biggest wins for me. That was one of the few chances I could really save with concrete. This is how much percent I saved. Um, with this, constant rep changes is um, the biggest
difficulty because after this has gone through, we're on to our next rep change. So things have changed a little bit different, but it, it proves the concept that I'm struggling with, with other people that, of selling them on, on the fact that if we send stuff outside, it can be cheaper than doing it internally after you add up all the hours that we put into it. So the final result uh, is difficult to show the impact. Our project lengths are six, eight, sometimes 12 months. The current project I'm working on is um, still continuing, but I was able to document the current process. I developed some key suppliers and introduced uh, the different people at Autonomous Traffic Corporation, um, some of the lean concepts and methodology. And it was uh, very interesting, probably one of the best parts about this uh, project is Dick is one of our welders, Dick's 75 years old, he's been in the industry for a very long time. And he saw me stretching duct tape across the floor mm -hmm. and he thought that was very funny. Mm -hmm. And going through and just marking where all my tools went, I mean, he, he was really getting a giggle out of it. But now it's kind of come turn full around because this was over a month ago that I did the 5S and everything is staying in place. People are learning where everything is, so it's working very well. Now Dick is showing interest in me coming back there, but he doesn't know that. It's not me doing it for him. It'll be something that he's going to be involved in. But he's more than willing, more than willing to help him with it. So key learnings is uh, the scope of work. Uh, I, in the beginning, wanted to expand this out to the electronic side as well, but there's only um, so much you can do with it within the time that you have. And the involvement of coworkers is great. It was difficult for me because we are a small shop. There wasn't a ton of involvement for other people, so a lot, a lot of what I was doing was on my own. And even if you can't prove through numbers that you've made an improvement, even something as simple as a spaghetti noodle diagram, maybe that's sometimes enough just to drive home the point of it. there is a savings here, even if I cannot exactly quantify it. And if you have any questions, this is Big Jim. This is our current um, project that we're working on right now, and hopefully we'll be done with it within the next month. Jerry, did you get uh did you get good buy-in on your financial calculations? I initially no. They were they they thought the cost was just going to be so far above and beyond what we were currently playing. But after showing this to them and the numbers, I mean the numbers are very simple. They are 100% on board on board with it now, and it's basically you just have to look at the capabilities of the machine and what they're trying to do is outside of the machine's capability. So after explaining it to them, they're 100% on board, and I think it is, it's going to make a big impact on how long it's taken us for all the day. I might not have caught it. Your work instructions, is that something you developed yourself, or is that something you were just uh, you know, making a rev change on? No, it's, it's something I developed myself. Yeah, and that was developed on a, on a standard product that goes into one of your final this, projects? The, the current rev motor, is something we're going to try and modify as little as possible and more or less use it as a standard platform. There, and that's, so there are some things that I chose not to go into great detail on. Some of the ways that the hydraulic cables were coming out the back, those things are going to change every time. But my overall process that I've documented is going to remain the same, more or less with a lot of different modifications. So I was going to, I tried to leave it open far enough so we'd be able to use this document. On the FEMA, it looked like there were maybe some actions recommended, like go or no go gauges. Were those recommended actions or things that already are in place today? At, at the time they were recommended, um, they, they, they've been developed now. But like I said, that was, that was the toughest part because it was, it was my view of what is the most risky and then it was assigned to me to fix. So it's, you know, but I try. I tried to go through the process and at least show of how you would do it in a little bit larger company. But I, I didn't use that, and it was also kind of a way of saying, hey, this is why this is important. That I should spend the time to develop, you know, jigs because it takes time. Yeah. Geez, that's perfect. Then you know it's going to get implemented, right? <laughs> 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 
All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.